All right, we're going to kick off ATS and J 2023 recap on the Catalyzing Podcast with the incoming president, now current president, uh, president message, Ken C. Slack. Ken is uh, stepping in from uh, president-elect to the president role here in the Athletic Trainer Society of New Jersey in 2023. Congratulations, Ken, on on transitioning into your new role. Very excited about that. Um, before we kind of get into some key takeaways from his president's message and also just some general things that the ATSNJ is working on in 2023, um, Ken, in addition to being the ATSNJ president, he's a chiropractic physician with Garden State Therapy Group. And... Um, you know, he is uh, not not just involved in a lot of the athletic training stuff in terms of the traditional setting, but I love his passion for growing and expanding our bound boundaries as athletic training profession, as professionals as well. So, uh, Ken, really excited for, for what you're bringing to this. And let's kind of get into some of your key focus areas from the business meeting, from your president's message. And you've, you talked about some legislative updates that are happening in New Jersey. Can you kind of speak to what's going on with the State Practice Act, as well as potentially some new bills being introduced? Yeah. So first thing I'd like to start off by saying thank you for having me on the podcast. And thank you again for agreeing to come and have Catalyzing Athletic Trainer podcast part of our society meeting. I think it's great. I think it's great to get the word out about the different uh, talks that were there, especially for people who may not have attended, and also to let people know what we're trying to do here across the state. So thanks so much, Ryan. So one of my goals with the 2023 meeting and my initial address was to not only talk a bit about what are some of our updated uh, upcoming legislative goals uh, with regards to where we're trying to go with athletic training in New Jersey, but also to encourage people to get involved. And and I really do believe that that's so vital for our profession. We need people to get involved. Uh, And it doesn't, again, as I said in in uh, my speech, it does not mean that they have to necessarily run for office. I realize that takes a lot of time and some people just don't necessarily want to do that. But but there's many ways you can get involved, right? So you can get involved by uh, taking part in a committee. You can get involved by just voicing your opinions to people on the committees, you know, let them know what your concerns are. So involvement can be as simple as just being a voice and involvement as far as the athletic training profession can just be as simple as going out there and, and promoting the profession and making sure that people are aware of what it is that you do and what role you play in the healthcare of athletes. So these are some key things that, that I wanted people to, to think about and be aware of that, you know, they can be involved in many different ways. Um, But insofar as what our goals are in this coming year, uh, what we are pushing for is some legislative changes that hopefully we can at least initiate the process, even if we don't necessarily get these, um, you know, passed through to become statute of law in the next year. And our biggest legislative push is uh, to reopen our practice act and one of the main goals of reopening the practice act is to change the definition of the population that we we treat and when i mean change the definition i don't mean necessarily change that population but just clarify it a little bit more so right now uh the word athlete is in there and an athlete can mean many things right but most often it's thought of to mean people that play on a sports team a competitive sports team However, uh, people that are weekend warriors can be athletes per se, right? And, and, and right now, the way that term is utilized, it kind of limits our ability to practice in multiple settings for some of our members. So what we're looking to do is to update that wording to um, not only identify a larger group of patients that we are currently working with and capable of working with, but also to um, give our members more opportunities to practice in different settings because one of the fast and growing segments of our membership are people that don't work in a traditional setting traditional setting being defined as um, secondary school collegiate or professional teams Um, more and more of our members are working in non-traditional settings the military Mm -hmm. law enforcement clinical uh, physician practices And so we want our Practice Act to recognize those different settings and to allow our 
members to practice at the top of their licenses and training, not necessarily exceed their licenses or training in no way, but to be able to practice at the top of what it is that they are allowed to do according to the scope and also what it is that their training has prepared them to do. Mm -hmm. So again, be, besides the uh, the scope act uh, that we're looking, well, the scope, our scope practice act, what we're looking to also work on with the with the uh, cooperation of the legislature is um, also ensuring that athletic health care in this state is actually uh, improving not just at the secondary school level, which we're already pretty good at. You know, New Jersey has about a 90 percent saturation rate for athletic trainers at the secondary school settings amongst the highest in the country. Uh, but for the other settings and other levels where there are not adequate uh, health care opportunities uh, for those who take part, meaning that the, uh, for example, the youth level and the club level, there are many instances where there is no athletic training coverage or any type of health care coverage at those events. And that puts a lot of these athletes at risk. Um, and as we saw, unfortunately, this past winter, uh, I think it was in February with that youth football program in Newark, we saw a situation where a young young boy went into cardiac arrest and, and nobody was available to uh, to provide CPR or to have an AED on site. And, and that's unacceptable and we can't allow that to happen. So hopefully we can, with the help of the legislature, push initiatives that will improve the health care in settings such as that, not just at the high school level. I think that's crucial. And, you know, when it's not just about putting a full time athletic trainer in each of those organizations, I think, like right. you spoke to, it's about global changes. It's about policy updates, um, safety prevention, preventative measures. It's about maybe finding ways to leverage an athletic trainer across a, a handful of those organizations and providing access. But then also us as athletic trainers, more of us uh, getting certified to teach CPR so we can teach more people of those life saving skills that are there on the sideline that can't be there if we're not there, you know, for those game practices and event coverages. So, um, you know, because you and I both know there's been conversations, there's the shortage of athletic trainers and, you know, the data shows there's not a shortage of athletic trainers. There's just more jobs out there. There's more opportunities out there across all settings, more of a demand, which is exciting for our future. It's just a headache right now because we want to live up to that and deliver it and we can't. So, you know, um, as athletic trainers to, to that call to action you're talking about, we have to get creative with how can we still deliver healthcare in a variety of ways and teach others um, not to take our jobs. Teaching others CPR is not going to replace a need for athletic trainers. Right. It's exactly. just going to help more people be safe. So I, I appreciate that that that's a focus area of yours. Um, I know there's also a bill that's being introduced potentially about, um, you know, mandating athletic trainers at the secondary school setting in some way, shape or form too, which is exciting. Um, again, we would have to fill out, find a way to, to deliver that. But if it happens, it could open up a lot of doors for for us to provide help. Right. And that and that's just it. We're, we're just looking for ways to improve health care for all people to take part in sports mm -hmm. programs uh, across the state. And again, it doesn't necessarily always mean having an athletic trainer in each situation. We realize there are situations where maybe an athletic trainer cannot be present for due to cost or whatever, but mm -hmm. that doesn't negate the fact that the people that are there should at least be prepared to perform basic CPR and first aid uh, procedures if needed in an emergency situation. And and so it's really about getting that out to a greater extent. Now, there are already laws and statutes in place, but again, mm -hmm. as it regards to those lower levels, it, it tends to be somewhat of a gray area uh, in many instances. And I think what we need to do is we need to uh, close up loopholes so that those, those children are protected as well, not just only at the high school or collegiate levels. And professional levels, of course. You think about middle schools and there's you know, cardiac arrest happens at the middle school level. Right. You know, it's about preparing that region, that that group 
and are enhancing healthcare to them as well too. So I appreciate right. you thinking about that. And you also mentioned about the emerging settings. Um, I'm excited to now be on the the clinical and emerging settings committee in here here in New Jersey and and to collaborate with you and find finding ways to enhance those athletic training opportunities. Uh, very exciting to to see that happening in New Jersey and many other states across the country. And you mentioned about the involvement not just by serving in office, but by just raising your voice, bringing ideas and whatnot. And I think all of those things you spoke to really help us towards the the greater strategic plan that the NATA has. I'm really a big fan of the current uh, NATA strategic plan. I think there's a lot of um, a lot of meat to it, and there's a lot of opportunity, but it also requires a lot of action. Um, action by national level, action by the states, the regions, and action by individual athletic trainers. Ken, what are some calls to action that you have for athletic trainers to do their part? And by the way, if you haven't seen the NATA strategic, NATA strategic plan, you don't have to be a member to see it. Just Google NATA strategic plan. You can find the PowerPoint. You can also find the video from President Derringer that, that goes through it. Um, but Ken, what's your call to action for athletic trainers to do their part to help further this strategic plan to help us all rise together? Okay, again, I, I'm probably repeating myself here, but I think the biggest call to action is to get involved. Now, certainly the best way to get involved is to get involved at the local level, all right, with your state association, uh, possibly district association, but really everybody pretty much starts at the state level. Sometimes there's even more local uh, associations involved in certain other states, maybe like a state like Texas that has a very large state, they might have more regional associations. But in New Jersey here, get involved with your state association, reach out to us, let us know if you want to get involved. We'll try to find a way to get you involved on a committee or subcommittee. Start to start to do things like that. Because again, in order for us to make these changes, we need to have involved, we need to have a grassroots um involvement so to speak mm -hmm. where everybody is coming out and sometimes that will involve like if we start to push our scope law i mean scope bill and it, it starts to get to a point where there'll be votes on it we'll need people making calls or reaching out to emails to the state legislators in encouraging them to vote for this bill not just the ones that have sponsored it but we obviously need all those other votes as well so sometimes the involvement may just simply be be ready to make calls or send emails on behalf of your profession when the need arises. All right. Also to be there for your athletes, obviously. I think the best PR we have is when our athletic trainers do what it is that they normally do on a given day. All right. Which is to care for the, the athletes that are under their guidance and tutelage. And so just be there. People recognize you. They see you and be professional. Right. Obviously, how we act and how we, you know, how we, you know, carry ourselves plays a big role in how people interpret what it is that we do. So just keep that in mind. And I'm sure most of our members do that well already. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that those are the little things that add up in the long term and help us to achieve the goals that we want. You're absolutely right. It's not just the the plan from the top down and the leadership. It's also, you know, all of us owning it and really doing what we can do to help it. And that's how we're gonna get this profession, you know, the areas that people have concern about, that's how we're gonna move forward to address those. That's how we're gonna grow with professional branding, with more people understanding who we are and what we're doing. So um, Dr. Ken, thank you so much for taking some time. Uh, again, congratulations in your new role. I'm very excited to, to see what happens over the next two years uh, under your leadership. And uh, we, we really appreciate everything that you're doing. Again, thank you for your service. And thank you for taking some time to debrief here on the ATS and J leadership. Um, your contact information is in the show notes. So if anybody wants to follow up, they can reach out to you as well, as well as your social media. Um, absolutely, you know, speaking personally, it's easy to, to get in touch with Ken and he's uh, very good at getting back as well because he wants to, to listen and he wants to create conversation, which helps us all. So thank you, Ken, and I look forward to talking to you again soon. Brian, thank you for having me on tonight and I look forward for us working together in the future. You betcha. All right. Have Be a well, great night, my friend.